And you, when you look back at a film like that, I mean, that film is so over the top and so chaotic too. Like, what what was that like putting that like death proof together? Because it seems it's it's such a crazy movie because there's so much dialogue and you're getting to know these people yeah. and then they die in horrific, terrible ways. Well, it was well one. It was like it was I'd been coming to Austin by that point in time about ten years. And so I had a whole group of friends in Austin. I have all these memories. And, and I've been, uh, you know, later I owned a movie theater called the New Beverly Cinema, and I still own it now. And we show movies there a lot, oftentimes from my collection. But before I had that theater, I used to come to Austin. And we would have what we call QT Film Fest, where I bring a bunch of prints over. And, uh, and we would usually, first we did it at the Dobie, when it was the Dobie was like the cool independent theater out here and then it became the Alamo Draft House um, back when uh, you know back when it was like on Guadalupe or whatever and we would go in and show the movies there and that's how I got to know Tim League and all the Alamo Draft House people and we would uh, uh, have like two weeks or a week and a half all right of uh, of uh, movies and and so I got to just really know all the cinema people and all the you know just all the cool hipsters in, in Austin, I got very familiar with the place. And so uh, when I did Death Proof, since I made it take place in Austin, that was my chance to do an Austin movie. And, you know, the, and, and we shot at the Texas Chili Parlor for like two weeks. And then uh, we'd be there all night and shooting at the Texas Chili Parlor. And then we would wrap around the morning time. And they're going to open up in about four hours or so. And then we would just start drinking, you know, the, the crew that hung around. We would just start drinking and you know, have a little after bar party you know, for two or three hours. And then go home and wake up and start it all over again. How did you know you are going to use Kurt Russell? Was that your first choice? No, my first choice was Mickey Rourke. Really? Yeah. Oh, Wow. But uh, and it was going to be Mickey Rourke, and Mickey wanted to do it. But then his agent started like, you know, his agent said, "Well, they need Mickey," and so the agent started fucking with us. Oh. And it was one of those things where goddamn agents. Yeah, it was one of those things where it was like, uh, um, Robert was doing his movie Planet Terror first, so I'm waiting to do mine when he gets done. And the agent was was fucking around with us, and I was literally, okay, look, here's. Here's one of the offers. You have until 9 o'clock Friday night to accept or reject. And they just let that deadline blow by, and so that was it. And then so then I started thinking, well, who next? And, and then me and Robert Rodriguez had always loved Kurt Russell, and we sent him the script. I never met him before. Well, I had met him once. Uh, um and he, he read it and he, he loved it and then we and he said yes and we got together and did it and me and Kurt have had a magnificent relationship ever since. Kurt Russell's awesome. I mean, he's good in so many fucking movies. Yeah. All the way back to the thing, you know. Oh yeah, all the way back to Dexter Riley when oh, he was yeah. doing doing the Disney shit. But was is there like a, a way that you would have contacted Mickey? Is there like a is there a protocol for that? Like, is there a time where you want someone for your part so so much? Well, I you actually knew guy. Mickey at the time. He was actually, he was like a neighbor. He actually lived down the street from me. So, like, I'd even gone down to his house and hung out, you know, a couple of times. So it was like, you know, so at first it was like just calling him up. Right. And then, like, gave him the script to read and he read it, you know, and he was like, what's Icy Hot? And I go, well, it's a thing he wears on his jacket. <laughs> it's sort of like, <laughs> it's like Ben Gay. Oh, okay. You know, uh, and uh, uh, he was talking about getting a pompadour and that would be a cool thing. He hadn't worn that look in a long time. And then, uh, you know, but it was just the, you know, the age, well, it was once the agents got in. And the agents were just sort of like, I mean, uh, and the agents were just sort of, oh, well, they need him. I mean, they need them so we can do what we want. Oh, fucking agents. And whenever agents treat that way to me, that's when I pull the plug. Yeah, rightly so. It's uh, it's amazing how much damage they can do, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're uh, arsonists disguised as firemen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing with lawyers. Yeah, well, sometimes you need them. 